seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hope you're having a great day, a great week already. I'm, I'm just blessed and highly favored to be in the house of the Lord tonight with you watching. And I hope we're going to be a blessing to you. I, I just, I know we're going to be a blessing to you. Because you know what? The Lord blesses here. And when the Lord yes. blesses here, it goes out into the yes. airways. And God has already started this year with an explosion <laughs> in the uh, spirit. Um, we'll get into that a little um, bit deeper a little later. But um, before we do that, we want to welcome, as always, uh, Brother Alvin and Sister Donna for Amen. our praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. You're all um, starting the new year, and you're out seeking God. That's what we've been concentrating on, focusing Amen. on. Our um, we attend a different church than a body love, but we come over here just as much as we can. We love it here too. Yes, we do. And our pastor had uh, directed us to be openly seeking. Amen. Every day, the Lord. Amen. Um, I start every morning with us uh, Psalm 63. And then I do a chapter in the New Testament as it goes along. Amen. Today, of course, I was in Matthew 10. Um, so, oh, I hope you're in that word. Continue Amen. to be in the word. We're going to start out with a with a song. Y'all know we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to lift up Jesus, see him high and lifted up in this song. Amen. Open Amen. the eyes of your heart. Yes. And praise with us. Amen. Holy Lord. You are holy, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Somebody's trying. 
Isn't it amazing that he rescues us? Yes. Just in the Amen. nick of time. <laughs> Hallelujah. What's been going on in your world this week? I can tell you in ours, it has just been, just like you said a while ago, in an explosion. There's been such, and you know, it's funny because the Lord said at the end of the year that there was coming such a great explosion and a fire from him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, eight days in, we had already seen, well, I will say, uh, seven days in, we've seen God moving in such miraculous way, ways that is unexplainable only by God. And that's how he moves. He moves in ways that far exceeds mm. our thinking. He, he moves in such a way that man can absolutely not get the glory. And that in itself is a yes. miracle because mm. when God moves in such miraculous ways... I mean, you know, he does it for a couple of reasons. One, he wants the glory. And two, it's because he loves us. Yeah. Um, and, and there's there's no other explanation um, for that. You know, man can do um, everything that, that they can try to do everything. Yeah. But at the end of the day, God is God. Yeah. And God is the one who can move the mountains out of the way. God is the one that can move sickness out of the way. God is the one that can move fear and the the uh, impossible out of the way. That's the kind of God we serve. That's because he's our Heavenly Father. He's our King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He is the great I Am. Becky, it started on January the 2nd when everybody was watching NFL football and they seen a player go down. He died on the field. Yes. You know, they everybody stopped the game. They began to pray. Mm -hmm. And God said in 2021, I think it's when we first started hearing this, and then he said it all through 2020, 2022, that he was going to start using his the, the platforms of the world. He was going to start using the football stadiums. He was going to start using the baseball stadiums. He was going to start using these arenas yes. to spread forth his word. Yes. And, you know, it's amazing how this happened. Because, see, here goes this man down on the football field who is dead. He's a young man. He's an athlete. And he went down like that. And they, they took him off the the field in a, on a, a stretcher. They got him to the hospital. They had him on a 100% um, ventilator. They began, everybody was praying. They only used, uh, or th then they started using the platform of ESPN because ESPN goes around the world mm -hmm. as well. They started praying on ESPN. Ooh. This young man, a couple of days later, started weaning off the ventilator. He went home from the hospital yes. Sunday, yes. and he yes. went home from the hospital thanking oh. Jesus because he said, ask and you shall receive, and he oh, received Lord the gift God. of life. Yes. And he left the hospital with a heart shake because he knew that God had healed him completely. You know, that's the kind of the miracle worker that we're serving. You know, then... God give me a word that something was going to happen on the 6th. And I hope this don't get shut down because we're on Facebook. But God give me a word that something was going to start happening on the 6th. And what, what started happening on January the 6th? Well, we were told, and, and we looked into this, that the Supreme Court is starting to hear um, 
about the integrity of the the election not the election itself but they're looking at the the people that should have questioned the integrity of the election that's a stepping stone because we know that that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he's trying to do everything he can mm-hmm. to stop everything. But I, I want to go back to the football player because at that time, everything stopped. Everything. The, the, the people stopped. The announcer stopped. The player stopped. The game stopped. Everything stopped when that player did not, he just passed out on the field. And and what a glorious sight to see all of the players, both teams, in one mind and in one accord bowing. This time they're bowing for the right reasons. It's not they're bowing because they don't stand for the flag. They are bowing because they are in a desperate situation you have to uh, imagine that those players thought that could have been me. That could have been that could have happened to any of us out here on this field and here we are this young man who drops and you know there's power in prayer. I don't care who it comes from, there is power in prayer and I believe that God used that platform for such a time as this yes. to get the awareness and the attention of even the world. Yeah. Um this this whole thing was caught on in the newspapers, on social media, on, on the TV. I mean, it was every news yeah. outlet. Yes, it was it was it, it got the attention of everyone and to see newscasters say I I just feel like praying. That's unheard of in this time, is to say a prayer on the news. You know, God said he was going to do it. You know, we got that, we, we saw that happen on January the 6th, and then, I mean, on the 2nd, and then we seen January the 6th. But then I received some news. Come on, bro. You may have to tell the story. These are definitely tears of joy because when you have prayed and prayed and prayed for the impossible and it seems like everything is doom and gloom around you and then God shows up and shows his light, there is, there is joy um, unspeakable. Um, you know, like you said, we had been praying and praying, and many others had been praying for a um, specific individual. And we won't go into detail of who they are in case they want to keep their anonymity. But, I mean, that's, that's it's their story. But they had a brain tumor. And they had some test results. We had been praying for over a year for this person because they had a brain tumor. And they would go to the, and they said, you know, we can do this, we can do that, but really there's there's not a whole lot that we can do outside removing this. And they didn't want to do that because nobody wants to be cut on it. And I, I just knew God is going to do something yes. because that's the God we serve. Yes. And we just began to pray, we began to pray, we began to pray. And I got a phone call Saturday afternoon, evening time, and his wife started reading off the test results. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't understand anything you just said. Give it to me in English terms. And she just began to say, there is no tumor found. They cannot find a tumor. It is gone. gone. And, you know, we we began to shout. And and service on Sunday morning was just a different kind of service. Because, see, God said in the last few years that this coming up year that we were going to start seeing people raised from the dead, which we saw. We were going to start seeing people healed. And we saw we were going to start seeing the government start to shift. And we've already started seeing that. See, that's the God we serve. He didn't waste any time. He started right. Right off the first right off seven the days of the month of yes. the year, and yeah. that's God, the God we serve. When God says He's going to do something, 
Nothing can go against his word. Nothing can stop his hand. Nothing can stop the will and the plan of God. When he said, yes. I'm going to, it's going to be an explosion in 2023. I'm going to do something new that our eyes have never beheld before. Okay, he did not waste any time. Within the first seven days, of 2023, you, we got this news. Don't you know that Satan is shaking his head saying, I don't understand. I don't understand. But we do understand yes. because on. that's who God is. Yes. God will never go back on his word. God's healing is right there in his hands. And and just to, to know, God, when it looked bad... God, we we chose. It was a choice. We chose to believe yeah. you. We chose to stand on your word. When it looked like, um, you know, people may say you might as well go ahead and get your your um, funeral, you know, together. You might as well make preparations. Um, I I when don't people know. People come across you and say, Are "You still here?" Yes, um, I don't know about you, but I refuse to give death the victory because Jesus paid the price. He overcame death, hell, and the grave. And, you know, God said in his word to speak life, not death, to speak life. And, you know, when we decided... We are going to speak life. I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care what it looks like. We are going to speak life and and life more abundantly because that's what Jesus came to do. He said, um, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. So when we decide, you know what? We've got a choice. We can either walk in the world. We can walk by what our physical mm-hmm. eyes see, yeah. or we can walk in the Word. Amen. And when you walk in Amen. the Word, it's that Word that sustains mm-hmm. us. It's our, the Word that, that just negates everything that the world yeah. Yeah. tells us, and even the enemy tells mm-hmm. us, is going to happen to us. Yeah. What happens is when you walk in the Word and you, and you pray like we've been praying, and when you hear the, the good news of the Lord... You know, that's why I began to cry. It's because the Holy Spirit is just, I heard a pastor say this one time, and this is the best way I can explain it. You're so filled with the Holy Spirit that it has to leak out somewhere. And when you see Pastor Shane crying, the Holy Spirit's leaking out all over the place. But the Holy Spirit's just been moving in such ways that, you know, we have said this so many times over the last year. Service was so good and so many people got something from it and there was healing here and the Holy Spirit moved here. It can't get no better. And then the next week it gets better and it gets <laughs> and it's just your cup runneth over. Yes. Because the word is jumping out of this book right in front of our very eyes. It's amazing how you know get the Lord's always been the same. He's the same yesterday, today, yes. and forever. And when he said that the dead was going to rise, mm-hmm. when the dead is going to rise, we've seen that when we read about Lazarus. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and when he told Lazarus to come forth, he had to say Lazarus come forth because if he didn't say Lazarus, all dead would have come forth. <laughs> yeah. So he told Lazarus to come forth. And what a testimony because he had, he had already been there and he'd already started to stink. He told Lazarus to come forth and he came forth. That's what's happening already this year. He He is raising people up from the dead right before our very eyes. He is taking things out of people that man said would not happen unless they had an operation or they die from it. But my God said, I can do whatever I say I can do. And if I promise you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. That's the God we serve. We serve a God that says, okay, man screwed up the government so bad, I I can fix it all. Man can't fix the government. No. No. If we're waiting on man to fix the government, we're in the wrong place. God can fix the government. Yes. That's the only one that's going to fix the government. Amen. That's where I Becky, I am. Last week I was excited that I had to stand up. I am so excited already for what the Lord is. Seven days in. Yeah. And we've already oh, seen what we've seen. Yes. Imagine what he can do in the next 350 <laughs> Exactly. We haven't seen anything yet. And it, it's it's for the 
the body of Christ yes. as a whole. Yes. It's you know it, it seems like the the bride of Christ and the body mm. of Christ has been through warfare. He's That's been right. through the battlefield. The it's been mm. um, you know we've been beaten, battered. We've got um, war scars. We've we've gotten battle scars. But you know the thing about war uh, battle scars and being in in war is that we learn something along the way. Yeah. Um, um, we know that the word says that he's coming back for a bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, yes. which means we're not going to have those those war uh, scars, those battle scars. We're we're going to be um, completely pressed. We're going to look like we have mm-hmm. it together because we will have it yes. together. Yes. We're, we are going to know the God that we serve. Yeah. We're going to know everything in the word um, and apply it to our lives lives and that's why when we come through what we come through mm-hmm. the victory is so much sweeter mm-hmm. the strength of right. uh, of the right. lord always yields results the, the strength of the word always yields results. Yes. That's why it's so important to stay and get in the word of God. Because yes. when you feel like you can't make it another day, that word is going to yes. remind you, I have, I oh, yeah. was created to last and to stand and to conquer. Thank you. That word also does something. I heard it this way. You, God prepares us for battle. He teaches us everything that we need to know to go into battle. But isn't it amazing that before we go into battles, God says, I've already won the battle for you. Yes. See, it's amazing. That's the Heavenly Father that we that we serve. He prepares us for the battle. Yes. But he takes the battle on and he wins it for us before we have to go through it. Mm-hmm. We may have to go through a little sickness. We may have to go through a little this, a little that. But God says in the end, I've already won everything yes. for you. Yes. That's who we serve. I and that. I can just tell you, those that are listening and those that are going to listen, if, if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, I can tell you the time is now. You've got yes. to know Him for yourself. Yes. You've got to know that the Lord died on the cross for you. And the only way to go to heaven, and I don't know why, but this God's got me saying this on this right now. The only way to get into heaven is through accepting the Lord into your heart. Yes. There's only one way. We can't get into heaven no other way. You can't get into heaven being a good person. You can't get into heaven not ever saying a cuss word. You can't ever get into heaven by not ever, I never killed nobody. You can't ever get into heaven because you just lived a good life. There's only one way into yes. heaven, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. There is only one way, and that's accepting him into your heart. That's that's it. There is no other way. But see, there's a reaction happens once we get saved and we ask God into our heart. And we we there's a fire that starts. And that's that fire that I've been talking about in the last several weeks. There's a fire that happens. And we want to tell everybody who Jesus is. Yes. That's the explosion part. Yes. And see, then we want to say, okay, God, you saved us. What's next? So then we want to say, God, we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. We get filled with the Holy Spirit, and that bomb gets a little bit more explosive. Mm-hmm. And then we're filled with the Holy Okay, Lord, what's next? We all have a calling. Woo. See, we've got to be saved, sanctified, and filled. And then God's going to fill us mm-hmm. with a calling like we've never had before. He's going to move in our mm-hmm. lives. Is it going to be a bed of roses? No. no. There's going to be trials. There's going to be, there's going to be troubles that, are, that try to attack you. Mm-hmm. But the Lord wins in the mm-hmm. end. You know, and it's not just, we think that if we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, our fate is sealed in heaven. And that is true. But there's a conversion yeah. that happens. Now, if you really put in your in your heart and believe in your heart and your mind that Jesus died for me when mm-hmm. I did not deserve it. He paid my ransom for me. Now it is my reasonable mm-hmm. service to devote my life to oh, him. Yeah. To everything that I do, I got to yield to him. Yes, everything right. that mm-hmm. I go, everywhere that I go, everybody I come in contact come with, I got to yield to him yes. because he is the center of my life. Mm-hmm. A lot of people just think that, okay, I'm going to say 
the sinner's prayer and then I can continue living like mm-hmm. I'm living. It yeah. doesn't work that way. Yeah. Because yeah, when when yeah, you wait. get a hold of God, yeah. God will get a hold of you. Ooh. And when God gets a hold of you, yeah. you there is such a change, a change. that should that mm-hmm. should take place. You, right. you don't want to go back to right. the 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 filth, the the sadness, the uh, the depression, all of these things. I'm not saying that Christians don't go through that. But what I'm saying is, and I guess I'm alluding to our scripture and what we talked about earlier. There is a strength that mm-hmm. comes from knowing and, and having a relationship mm-hmm. with the Lord Jesus That's Christ. Yes. That when we go through, after we go through the Come the on. excitement, after yeah. we go through the, the overfilling of the joy, and once we've been saved for a period of time, then we find ourselves going through battles that seem like it, we're alone. And we're really not because God said, I'll never leave you or forsake Amen. you. Amen. But then there's 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 trials and there's testings that come mm-hmm. because promotion we talked about this Sunday promotion has to occur but it takes us to our bowling point yeah. we think of a bowling point as I, I I can't get any angrier I can't get any more upset than I am right now but God takes that bowling point and said this is not the end of you I'm taking That's you right. here so that you'll have a choice to make mm-hmm. do I continue to let the uh, the enemy take me into a place of anger take me into a place where it seems like you're submitting to the enemy or do you understand who you created you were created to be yeah. and do you call out to God yeah. do you say God I'm not going to listen to him anymore I'm going to focus on your word mm-hmm. I know who my redeemer is yeah. I know what oh. I've been through yeah. and right. you didn't leave me back then right. so you're not going to start right. now. now when you get that inner mm-hmm. strength that only comes from God right. it may just be you mm-hmm. but when you understand the power yeah. of the strength of God, you will understand Mm -hmm. if God brought me to this point, he's already made a way of escape. I'm going to walk through knowing that he has made the way of escape, and then I'm going to be elevated and promoted. Mm -hmm. See, Satan tries to attack us, trying to push us back when really he's catapulting us to our promotion in God, and he doesn't realize Mm -hmm. that. But when we understand Mm -hmm. the strength of God, there is nothing like you. It, one day of strength with the Lord Jesus Christ right. against the world will take you to a place that you'll never want to go back right. to the world. I think it like this, Becky. Every trial and, and, and tribulation that we have to go through is being saved. It's like going to the gym. Mm-hmm. And when you go to the gym, you, you, you're, you're lifting weights and you're tearing down your muscles. And you're tearing those muscles apart. I think that's what Satan tries to do, spirit with us, with with our spirit. And the Lord says, the next morning when you get up, you're going to be stronger than the day before. It's just like going to the gym. When you tear your muscles down, you get up the next day, you feel a little bit stronger than you did before. You can start lifting more weights. See, every trial and... Every trial and tribulation (laughs) that we go through, that is God preparing us for something greater. That is building us stronger. That is making us more than conquerors. That is putting one foot in front of the other when we're in God's army. That's us being the generals on the army. That's us fighting the battle and God saying, you've already won. Because the next battle, you're going to be even stronger to fight it. See, that's that's who we serve. Listen, 2023, you said, I think it was the week before the first. So it had been, no, it wasn't. It was, I don't know, it was two weeks before the first. You said that the 2023 was going to be a uh, new beginning. Because if you add the numbers, a year completion. Yes. Because if you add up the numbers, two and two and three makes seven. Yes. So basically, like, seven is the number of completion. Yes. And so God is just saying everything that we've had to endure over these last few years with sickness, with heartache, Mm -hmm. with all this stuff that he is completing it. He is putting it back together. It's you. Have you ever been in church and somebody says God's about to give you double for your trouble? Yes. Well, see, that doesn't exist now. 
God's not about to give you double for your trouble. He's about to flip that thing upside down and say, I've restored it, not double, but I have completed it 100%. I'm not just giving you double back for your trouble. If Satan stole something from you, he's about to replace it something better than what you got stolen from. God said, if, if Satan attacked you, I'm about to heal it. If Satan's attacked your family, I'm about to put them back together again. If God, if, if Satan has has allowed something in your life to be stolen. God's about to give it back to you better than you've ever had before. See, that's where we're at this year. It's not about materialistic things. Listen, everybody can have whatever. I, I That to me does not matter. It's about, okay, what can I do for the kingdom? Because we read this all the time. You see it everywhere. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But see, we, we lose that. We lose that. He just didn't die on the cross. He suffered much to go die on the cross. But then I like to go over to Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. It says, for I uh, am not ashamed of the gospel. Mm -hmm. See, we cannot be ashamed of who we serve. <laughs> we serve an almighty, powerful God that died for us, that we can experience what we are experiencing already a few days into January. You know, it's um, it's funny that you say that the, the double for your trouble and, the, and God turning the, the card upside down all throughout the Bible. And again, this is where you have to you sometimes you just have to submerge yourself in the word of God to keep Satan at bay. Yeah. Instead of him talking in your ears, how do you resist the devil? Get in the word of mm -hmm. God. Because that is your saving grace. Um, all throughout the Bible, it was the children of Israel when they um, were freed from Egypt, when finally um, Pharaoh said, just go. Just <coughs> take, your, take your God, take your things and go. Yeah. It said that they came, the enemy gave them things to to leave with that um they were carrying them the four lepers mm -hmm. that sat at the city gates and said why sit we here until we die they went into the city and because the enemy had heard um what seemed like you know many um chariots and horses and things they ran the four lepers were able to come in and take what they wanted yeah. see um it was David and his men that when they came back from fighting, I believe it was the Amalekites, that they, that they came to Ziglag. Because I love that story about David and, and Ziglag, how everything, while they were out working and, and fighting, everything had been taken and stolen from them. And yes, the, everything had been stolen. And even the men started pointing at David and saying, this is your fault. So add insult to injury. You know, it's not, it's bad enough that I've had everything stolen. Now you're going to blame me for this happening. But God, God was so much inside of David mm -hmm. that David got alone with yeah. God and said, he encouraged himself in God. Ooh. And he said, what shall I do? Shall I pursue? Because God, uh, David knew what God gives you, it belongs to nobody else Amen. but me. And if Satan came and stole it, he has to give it back. And he has to give it back with interest. Oh, so when David decided, when God said, yes, you will pursue and without fail you will recover all yeah. that gave david the incentive the yeah. enticement god already said he gave me the word i'm sitting on go i'm going to get my stuff back and when it said that david came to where the amalekites were they were feasting they were um being overjoyous at what they had taken See, Satan will be overjoyous and sometimes we'll hear Satan laugh and, and just make, um, a mockery of what he did to us until God says, go get it back because he never should have taken it in the first place. Yeah. He, he, it has your name on it. And you're right when you said that it's not about material things. God will tell us, go get your joy back. Go get your peace yes. of mind back because it rightfully belongs to you. 
you. But you got to stay in the word of God because otherwise we're going to be intimidated. We're going to be fearful mm-hmm. when Satan comes and talks and taunts us so and, and says mm-hmm. all of these lies. But when we're fully vested in the word of mm-hmm. God, it's like that armor, that shield that comes around us that nothing will be able to penetrate that because it's the word that shields us, mm-hmm. not anything that, that we can do or say. Um, and you know, it, it's such a, a testimony to see that David was able to go get back and then some, mm-hmm. and then some. See, Satan says right now, I'm going to steal their, I'm going to rob them of their sleep. I'm going to rob them of their joy. I'm going to rob them of their peace. I'm going to rob them of their children and their grandchildren. I'm going to rob them of their health. I'm going to rob them of this, that, and the other. But what Satan doesn't realize is he may hold on to it for a while, but interest is growing. Yeah. It's building. And so when when Satan comes to us and says, I'm going to take your, your health away, that's okay. Take my health because that's just adding days to my life where you would have otherwise taken it out. God says, no, it's not your life to get. Right. It's not your life to steal. Yeah. So while you think you're, you're stealing the health, you're really just adding good days of health and not just good days, there's going to be days where we're stronger in the Lord. And when we get stronger in God, Satan doesn't have a chance. <laughs> Becky, people, there's a lot of people that's always fearful of death because they say, I don't, I'm not ready to die. I'm not, I don't want to die. I don't want, you know, this is, I used to be one of those and God has just showed me that he is going to use me until I am used up and then it'd be my time. You know, we've said that we're neither one of us. We're, we're not down. We're going up in the rapture. But <laughs> what what we what we're talking about is God's going to use you if you stay in the Word. No man can tell you when you're going to die. Mm-hmm. No demon in hell is going to tell you when you're going to die. Only God yes. has that appointed time. Time is and in you God's live hands. like every day is your last to God because yes. I I choose. To serve God with 100%. Do I fail? Yeah, because I'm human. But I choose to serve God with my all. I want to give God my all. And you talk about that time getting by yourself. Yes. There's something about getting by yourself yes. and you and God. I was over here last week and I was, I was telling somebody the other, the other day. I got over here in this church the other, the other day and we began to do some work on the windows or I did. And, <laughs> and I just, I, I cranked up the praise and worship music. Yep. And there was a song on that talked about the fire. And it just got all in me, and the fire started burning. And I cranked it up a little louder, and I cranked (laughs) it up a little louder. And before I knew it, I guarantee you the surrounding counties could hear the praise and worship coming out of this church. Mm -hmm. Because God is just doing something so new. You talk about that interest. I thank the Lord for the interest because it's yes. the interest that when God gives back, he gives an overabundance supply. So, yeah, your joy has been stolen. God's about to bust it wide open with the yes. overabundance. You know, there is laughter coming to this church. Yes. We've already started to see a little taste of it. But <laughs> yeah. see, there's laughter coming. And why would you laugh in church? Because that is the Holy Ghost oh of the just pure joy yeah. in your spirit. When you're laughing in church because of the, the pastor preaching or being prayed over, that is rubbing that in Satan's face yeah. saying, you know what, Satan? My God has blessed me. My God has taken care of me. My God has healed me. My God has put food on my table. Yeah. My God has given me more than enough yeah. and you ain't going to do nothing about it. Yeah. Smear that in your face, devil. <laughs> you know, the, the, the scripture says the joy of the Lord yeah. is our strength. When, when we get the joy of the Lord, there's a strength that, that we're clothed with because when you have joy about something, you're not worried. Right. When you have joy, you're not angry. When you have joy, you're, you're not um, fearful. Otherwise, it's not joy. Mm-hmm. But when you have the joy of the Lord, that is a strength unlike any other. The scripture that we have is Isaiah 25 and 4. Isaiah 25 and 4 And it says, for thou hast been a strength to the poor, 
a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. When the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. We talk about strength. We talk about God being um, a the joy of him brings our strength. Um, but this scripture says, for thou hast been a strength of the poor. You know, when we hear poor, we think of um, just poor monetarily. But that's not mm-hmm. that's not all that poor means. You could be poor in spirit. Yeah. You could be poor in joy. You could be poor mm-hmm. in, in peace and happiness. It's yeah. not just material things. But he said, thou hast been a strength of unto the poor, a strength to the needy in mm-hmm. times of distress. Yeah. Think back over over your life where you were deficit in some areas, not just money, but you were deficit in in peace. You were deficit in in there was a shortage of joy in your life. Um, nothing seemed you may have had everything going right, but there was just something um, looming around you. It says that God is a strength to those people, a refuge from the storm. Hey, we've all been in a storm the last few years, and it seems like the storm is never ending. But God is the one that controls the storm. It says he's a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat. Every time that I think of a shadow, I think of Psalms 91 and 1. Mm Mm-hmm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Do you know that when you abide in the shadow of the Almighty, you are protected from the heat of Satan? You are protected from the heat of his attacks, the heat of of the storms that's coming through, the heat of the fires. Think about the Hebrew boys. God took the heat out of the fire because he is right there with them. And they were just walking around. And it was the enemy that recognized the Son of Man was standing with the three Hebrew boys that he just threw into the fire. That's one of my most favorite stories in the Bible, Becky, because that shows so many things of what we are living today. You know, we have to have faith. And those three Hebrew boys had so much faith that they said, we're going to be protected in the fire or out of the fire because we will not serve a God that's not our God. Yes. And they, I, I can just imagine, you know, they said that the very guards that threw them in the fire went up, disintegrated. Yes. Yep. And I can just imagine them trying to look over there and they say, okay, there's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And who's that other guy down in there? And I can just imagine we only threw three in there. But they were walking around down there. Not even a hair was singed on their head. There wasn't even a bowling on the skin. There was, they was walking. I can just imagine. See, it don't tell us this in the Bible, but I can imagine that they got down there and they was walking around in the fire and they began to see, okay, we're here. This is impossible because we've got God on our side. Hallelujah. We're going to stop praising. I guarantee you they started breaking out in the Holy Ghost revival right there in the midst of the fire. But that fire, that's what I'm talking about. The fire that we are about to enter into, the Holy Spirit, is about to be turned up 10 times hotter than we've ever seen before. That fire is just so combustible. Yes. What did I say a couple weeks ago? We're going to see fire. We're going to see explosion. And it's going to be uncontainable and combustible. Yes. And God is... God is about to do something. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. those that are listening, I want you to listen to me. We're already, we're just, what, a week and a half into this new year. Yes. And God has already started. I mean, that bomb is already exploded. <laughs> I can't wait. See, we've been, we've been talking about, hey, we're praying for revival. We're, revival's coming. Revi- no, 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 no. The it's revival's here. been here. It's here. <laughs> but we're about to see that revival knob turned up. See, revival's here. We're about to enter into a season like we have never yes. seen before. Yes. You know, I started doing a fast, Becky. And I started doing a fast, and I started praying differently than I've ever prayed for before about some things. Mm-hmm. Even things I hadn't even shared with you yet. Because, see, I'm waiting on, on God to do something. I know he's going to do it because he's already said he was going was gonna to do something. But I have noticed... Sometimes we have to do a fast. Mm -hmm. And I've been in this fast, and I have just been praying, and God has been 
just exploding every time I turn around. You know, I used to turn the news on and get get my my heart full of a, a bunch of just garbage of what was going on around mm-hmm. me and, yeah. and the gloom and dooms. But now what I do is instead of getting up in the morning and turning on the news, I'll get up in the morning and I go and I take out the good news. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I asked the Lord, I said, well, you know what news I need today, Lord? I want you to send me to what I'm going to have to need today in my life. And I read mm-hmm. that. And then there's a, a, a great, great, great evangelist friend of mine, Brother Cromer, told a uh, story when he gets up in the morning, he says, okay, Lord, what would you have me to do today? Mm-hmm. You know, we, we're so consumed with us that we go to work, we go do whatever it is that we're going to do throughout the day. Why don't we start off our day with the good news? Why don't we start off our day saying, God, what would you have me to do today? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to go to work. I understand that. But there is a purpose in our day mm-hmm. outside of work. You can witness to those at work. Yes. You can spread the good news at work. You can spread the good news wherever it is you're at. But I would encourage you, ask the Lord each and every day, what would you have me to do for your kingdom today? You know, the last part of that scripture that we read of Isaiah 25 and 4 says, when the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. You know what that wall is? That wall is God and His Word. Have you ever felt like that the blast of the enemy was so powerful and so massive that it just kept pushing you back and pushing you back? But suddenly, it it makes you feel like it says a storm against a wall. When you hit a wall, there's nowhere else to go. You can't back up anymore. When you hit that wall, that's God saying, no, you can't keep backing up. I've not made you to back up. I've made you to pursue. So now that hitting against the wall, that stone or that storm that hits against the wall, that is, uh, should be a reminder. That God has created us to move forward in his authority, mm-hmm. to move forward in power. That we have the power to come against the blast of the enemy. Yeah. He can blow us back all he wants to. But when our mouth starts projecting the word of God, mm-hmm. that is a blast mm-hmm. that will push the enemy back further than he oh. ever thought. Yes. Because mm-hmm. it's the word that, that brings the attack against Satan. And it brings him low. It's that two-edged sword. Mm-hmm. It cuts going and coming. So when in this new year, um, it it just makes me think the attacks we know, the attacks of Satan are not going to stop. That he's no. going to keep coming. No. He's going to he's going to keep creating weapons. He's going to keep creating attacks. We know this um, because he knows that his time is short. We know where we're going, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and and you know what? We our fate is secure. His, on the other hand. If I were him, I would be rattled too. But for him, he knows that he's got to do all that he can to prevent us from being, from growing in God, from coming against him even more, from, um, he's got to shut us up so that we don't spread the good news, like you said a few minutes ago to other people. But when we come against that, that wall, God has to remind us, you don't have to take this abuse. Mm -mm. You don't have to take this this attack from Satan. You don't have to take it. Why? Because I've made you to be more than a conqueror. And a conqueror is no stranger to battle. This, this, um, This blast of the terrible ones that the scripture talks about, it should come as no shock or surprise to us when Satan blasts like a roaring lion. He's not the roaring lion. There's only one lion of the tribe of Judah. We've got this picture up um, to remind us of that. But when we make up in our mind, it's all a thought. Amen. We can choose to overcome today, or we can choose to lose today. But God has not made us to lose. God has made us to win and overcome through Him. We just have to realize who's on our side. Yeah, It's the Lord Jesus Christ. We are more than conquerors. And you know, some of you may be out there right now saying, well, how do we fight? How do we fight against the enemy? Well, I can tell you there's one simple way. If you can't get close to a Bible, if you're by yourself and there, and you just feel like you're all alone, there's one word that you can just speak. 
and every demon in hell will tremble. Yep. And that's the name of Jesus. Yep. All you have to say is Come Jesus. On, you know, there's something about that name on, that when something bad's on, going on, on, and the only thing that you can get out is the name of Jesus. Yep. When you're so sick that you can't even read the word, all you can say is Jesus. On, yes. There's a reaction that happens yes. when the name of J- the name of Jesus, is, there is no other name. That's the greatest name of all. Yes. The, the scripture says, before you call, I will answer. And while you're yet speaking, I will hear. Amen. There's something, there's something about that, that God already knows what we need. Mm-hmm. He already know, He's just waiting yeah. to hear the cries mm-hmm. of his people. He's waiting to hear his name. Absolutely. Out of her mouth in a good way, not in a bad way, in a good way. way. He wants to hear us ask because the Bible says we have not because we ask not. Mm -hmm. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And we have to make up, again, it's a thought. We have to make up our mind. God, I know who you are. I believe that you can handle and control and change my circumstance. I believe that you can help me release this this worry, this fear. Mm. I believe that you can help me. You You can walk before me and and, uh, battle with the enemy because the battle is not mine, it's yours. You know, when we understand that believing God is everything. Yeah. And when you believe God, you got to believe His Word. Amen. And if His Word says that we are more than conquerors, you got to take that to the That's bank. Exactly that right. you are not defeated. Yep. You do not have to step back. You do not have to be blown back by the blast of the enemy. But mm-hmm. you can actually, you've got a blast within you. Yeah. That is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That is deep Come down on. inside. When you start saying, not your feelings or anything else, but when you say, devil, let me remind you who mm-hmm. God is. He he is my redeemer. He's my savior. He's my my protector, my provider. He's the one that cast you out of, of heaven and he's gonna he's going to commit you to the pits of hell. When you start reminding him of the word, that is a blast coming out of your mouth. Yes. And it subdues the Amen. enemy and it causes him to flee in fear. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Becky, these these Tuesday nights. It is getting just like service. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, these Tuesday nights are starting to just explode in a way. Listen, God is, he, he is on the prowl. And I cannot wait. See, this church has already got, this church already has the blueprints. This church already has the construction already ongoing this church is about the walls are about to expand and the roof's about to go because we're going to have to have a place for people to come because in 2023 the word is going to be is going to go out in such a way not just in this church but churches across this world that's preaching the truth they're going to have to expand they're going to have to grow they're going to have to buy new properties they're going to have to do whatever it is that they can do to get the people in yeah. because people in this next year are going to run. I didn't say walk. I said run to the house of God because there's something going to happen this new year mm-hmm. that they're going to call and run. Yes. And and I said Sunday that the church is going to be that candle on a hill. Mm-hmm. You know, I believe, and we've said this before, that God can take one event and cover his people and bless his people and use it for the harm and the defeat of the enemy. Yeah. He we, he can do one event. He used the the pillar to lead and to protect the children of Israel from Pharaoh and his mm-hmm. army. It was a light to the children, but it was darkness Ooh. to Pharaoh. Yeah. So when you've got to again, you've got to choose which side are you on? Whose report do you believe? Yeah. Thank who you. who do you want in your corner? Do you Thank want you. God or do you want the world? Yeah. Do you want government or do you want God? That's where we've got to get to. And once you decide, God, I'm completely sold out to yes. you. God, for you I live, for, for you, you I, I die. die. Whatever it takes, God, if it's just me and you, I choose you. Yes. Amen. Because at the end of the day, he chose us. Yeah. That's exactly right. So Amen. we're going to pray before we um, end our live stream. We always like to pray 
Um, and, you know, prayer changes things. We know that. Yeah. We, we've heard testimonies um, already in this new year. Yeah. And it's, it, that's just the, the beginning. Yeah. That's healing Keep number one. Healing number one. We're we're geared up for healing number two, mm -hmm. um, and and those thereafter. So, um, if you we're gonna pray. If you have a prayer request, if you have um, a need in your body, or you know someone, maybe you just need God to do something in your life. Yeah. I want you to stand in agreement with us as we pray mm -hmm. that not only can God do it, but God will do it. You got to believe Amen. that he is that he he can Amen. do what you're asking. He's able to do what you're asking him to do. Thank you, Lord. And Amen. so we're going to pray right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you as humbly as we know how. Lord, we know that we fall short of the glory of God. But God, your mercies are new every day. Lord, that you provide for us each and every day, even when we don't deserve it. And God, there is no God like you. There is no God beside you. There's no God like you in any shape, form, or fashion. And thank Lord, you, Lord, we honor you. We yes. thank you. And God, we just, we love you, Lord. Yes. And Lord, we just know and believe we're coming to you, knowing and believing that you are who you say yes. you are. And you can do what you say you can do. Lord, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that God, they don't know you for themselves. God, it is the most important decision that they'll ever make yes. in life. God, I ask that you put a hook in their jaw. Lord, that they would be so drawn in by the Holy Spirit. Lord, that they won't be able to do anything else but, but to surrender. But God, it's not that they're surrendering their everything that they have. They're getting so much yes. in return. They're yes. getting peace. They're getting joy. God, they're, they're getting an eternity with you. No more pain. No more suffering. Lord, just pure joy. And Lord, I ask that if there be any that that maybe they know you, but God, they've walked away from you. you maybe they've allowed life to separate mm -hmm. you and yes. them. God, I ask that you lead them back to the cross. Yes. Lord, I ask that you that you show such great mercy and grace and allow their eyes to see that many of us should not even be here had it not been for your hand. Amen. But God, you, you're not done with us. You're Amen. not done because we have a purpose and a destiny and a calling in you. And God, I ask that if there be anyone under yes. the sound of my voice who yes. has said, God, I've allowed things to separate us. Lord, I ask that you move those things mm -hmm. out of the way. Yes. Lord, help yes. us all to prioritize yes. and yes. make you first again. Yes. Lord, make us, make you yes. first in our lives, make you yes. first in our nation, yes. in our country. God, let yes. us all make you first in our hearts yes. Yes, once Jesus. again, you, Lord. because Lord, your word yes. says that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. God, forgive us. Heal us and set us free. Yes. Lord, if there be any who are sick and afflicted, mm -hmm. God, I ask that your healing virtue flow. We know that you are a healer. Yes. We just had a testimony, Lord, of something that impossible that stunned the doctors. You did it for one. You can do it for yes. others. Yes. And I know that you are able. Lord, I ask that you heal you, their Jesus. bodies. You heal every sickness, every yes. disease, God, that yes. they may know that you are God Hallelujah. and that Lord, that nobody steal any joy or any glory from you or your name, <coughs> yes, but God, once they're healed, once they're delivered, once they're set free, once they're saved, Thank you, Lord. Lord, that there would be such a joy come out of their yes. mouth saying glory yes. to God. Look what he did for me. Yes. Lord, I thank you for each and every person. I thank you for where you've taken us, God, and I thank you for where we're going. And Lord, we just ask that you cover us all this new year. Lord, prepare us 
before you position us. Yes. Lord, prepare us for what you're about to show Thank us. You, prepare us for the things, oh, the healings, the good oh, news, yes. the, the yes. things that our eyes have never even seen before. Yes. God, let us not be prideful. Let us not get in your way. But God, give us the wisdom yes. to allow you to do what you need to do. Yes. And Lord, let us be quick to give you every ounce of glory, every ounce of praise. Lord, let our lives point to you and you alone. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I just want to, we haven't done this in a while, but our information is going to be at the end. If you would like a, um, we have a little bottle of anointing oil and we also have prayer cloths. They are free. If you would like one of those, if you'll just, or, or, you know, whatever you need, if you'll just uh, contact us, the information's at the end of this broadcast, but if you'll just contact Amen. us, we will send it to you free of charge. There is no fee for this. We want to make sure, most of all, that you have it. Mm-hmm. You know, we were we were changing our sheets the other day in the bed, and we had thought, we thought <laughs> that we lost awesome. the prayer cloth, but it had been there the whole time because we put them in the pillowcase, and God yeah. was just reminding mm-hmm. us, Hey, I'm, I, it's still right. here. Yes. Still there. But if you would like to have one, please just contact us and we will send it to you free of charge. If you're looking for a home church and you're in the Griffin area or the surrounding, our information is on there. We have church at 11 on Sundays, 6 30, 6 o'clock on Sunday nights, <laughs> and 6 30 on Wednesday nights. Yeah. This is Pastor Shane and Pastor Becky, and we love you and God bless and have a great rest of your week.